This video will show examples of minimizing three variable Boolean expressions using Kano maps. If we look at this min term, we can see it's not A, not B, not C. That corresponds to this area. If we look at this min term, we can see that is not A, not B, C, which corresponds to this area. If we look at this min term, we can see that is not A, B, C. That corresponds to this area. If we look at this min term, we can see it's not A, B, not C. That corresponds to this area. We therefore put a 1 in each of those squares. We now loop the 1s into a loop of 4 as you can see here. Now if I shade this particular area of the loop, we can see that in not B. If I shade this particular area, we can see it in B. Now that is an overlap across those two variables, so we discount those. If I look at that area and that, we can see that they are both in the not C area. If I shade this in, we can see it's in the C area. This is another overlap, so we discount those variables. If I look at the area of A, we can see that no part of the loop is actually in A. So we discount that variable. Now I'll just shade this in so we can see the entire loop. And we can see it is all in not A. Now because it is all in not A, it means that this minimizes to not A. Let's have a look at this example and we'll start with this min term. That's not A, not B, C. So that corresponds to this area. The next min term is this one here. And that is A, not B, C, which is this area. The next min term is this one here. And that corresponds to not A, B, not C, which is this area. This one we can see indeed is A, B, not C, which is this area here. We therefore will actually now need to put a 1 in each of those selected areas. On this occasion we have to loop the 2's individually because they're not next to each other as you can see here. Now if we have a look at this bit of the loop we can see that in the not A and if we have a look at this bit it's in the A and we know that's overlapping the variables so we can discount those. I'll show you in the entire loop so we can see it more clearly. It's obviously in not B and it's obviously in C. So the loop is represented by not B and C, as you can see here. Now if we look at the other loop, we can see that that is clearly in the B and the not C. And we don't have to shade to realize it's not anything to do with the A. So this loop is B and not C. So we can now minimize this to not B and C, which means me just copying this up here together with the B and not C, which is this one, and then we all them together. Now you can see that this sum of min terms has been plotted onto this three variable kernel map. Now I have shown all of the plots against their appropriate min terms by the colours as you can see before you. Now you can pause the video and check this yourself if you like. Now loop as many ones as possible with as few loops as possible. The loops can be loops of two ones or four ones. Well I can see four I can loop here. I can see another four that I can loop here. And I can also see another four that I can loop here. Let's just highlight the red loop which I'll do by simply shading it in here. Now if we do this we can quite clearly see that the loop is in the not B and the B. Now when it overlaps a variable like this we discount that variable so we discount that. We can see it also overlaps the not C and the C as we can see here. Consequently we discount that particular variable. If we have a look at the not A area well we can see quite clearly that none of the loop is in the not A area. 
Consequently, we can discount the knotty. And now if we look, we can see quite clearly that all of the loop is in the A area. So the loop is referred to as loop A. We'll shade in the green loop so we can clearly see it. And it should be obvious that this particular loop is entirely in the region of B. It overlaps the not A and the A, so we can discount that, likewise the C, and none of the loop is in not B, so we can get rid of that as well. We will now concentrate on the blue loop by shading it in to make it clearly stand out. And we should now see that, in fact, this overlaps the not A and the A, likewise the B areas, and we should be able to see that it's clearly in the area of C, and no part of it in the not C. So it's quite clear we have loop A, loop B, and finally we can see the blue one is loop C. Consequently, the counter map has allowed us to minimise the Boolean expression to A or B or C. Here we can see a sum of min terms and its plot on a three-variable counter map. And these colours allow you to see how I've actually done the plot. So pause the video there if you wish to check on these workings. Now it's a question of looping the wand. There's a loop of two, here's another loop of two, and a final loop of two. Now this is not the most efficient way of doing it. It can be done with fewer loops. Now this edge of a counter map is connected to this because it's actually a cylindrical shape. Now with that knowledge it's obvious that this particular loop can be made because they are actually next to each other, so that's a loop of four. Now you can see I've got this one by itself, and what I now need to do is to actually loop this in, and I can make a loop of two in this case. We'll now shade the red loop in so we can clearly see it, and we can see that it overlaps the A's, it also overlaps the B's. All of this area is C, none of the loop is in C, so we get rid of that, and it's clear that both parts of the loop are in not C. Therefore, the loop is regarded as being not C. We'll now shade in the blue loop, and we should be able to see that this is represented by not A and B. Consequently, this Boolean expression here, this sum of min term, becomes not C or not A and B.